Hello, I'm Ray, G4NSJ, part eight of the HRO. This is more about the power supply actually than the receiver itself. This is all done. Some people said, can I see you adjusting the IF transformers um, and tuning up the coil packs? I didn't do that because all you would see is me watching the S meter, IF signal from my Nano VNA and adjusting the IFs. They were all spot on anyway. So that's all I did. Get a, a signal generator or a Nano VNA, set it to the IF frequency. Okay, tune up the IFs. Use the S meter if you haven't got any proper gear. Really, you want a signal generator, a modulated signal generator and an audio output meter and all that sort of thing, which I used to have when I repaired vintage valve radios, but I don't have that anymore. Anyway, the Nano VNA is good and the IFs were spot on. The coil packs, which I've got uh, spare ones up there, these, it's just a long screwdriver. You need a very long <laughs> screwdriver to get right the way down from the top and just adjust them. The oscillators, I didn't adjust because they were fine. So that's that. It's the power supply uh, that it was the next step, which you haven't seen. There it is, in a wooden box. Now, you might think, you can't build a power supply in a wooden box. That's the uh, little light there to show it's on. HT 600 volts, HT 250 volts and mains. I might put a meter on it, a voltmeter or something. The funny thing is, I, I couldn't find an aluminium box. You know, when you build anything, you want an aluminium chassis, something like that, a steel box that you've got from somewhere, from an old, you know, perhaps some military stuff that you can build your project in. I couldn't find anything. I've been on eBay. I mean, in the old days, you could find stuff everywhere. So I thought, OK, it's going to have to be a wooden box. I needn't have worried because a friend of mine bought round a KW Electronics Vespa transmitter. There's a picture of that. For me to, he wants me to restore it for him. It's only a transmitter. He wants me to restore it. Look at the power supply. There, you, you won't believe it. It is built in a cardboard box. Well, there's a kind of metal plate at the bottom, I believe, like a chassis. But the cover is a cardboard box. So when I saw that, he bought it round here and I said, what's this cardboard box? And that's the power supply. So I'm quite happy now with my wooden box. Cardboard. I don't know, why would they do that? This is, what, what is it? It's a 1970s radio, I believe. So perhaps back then, I, I don't know, they had plastic. Why not make a plastic box? I don't know, aluminium. So there we are. That's the octal plug from the HRO. And I put an octal socket, just a valve base basically on the back. That plugs in there. And then plug it into the mains. Actually, you ought to leave that unplugged. If ever you're working on anything like this or whatever, unplug it. Doesn't matter whether it's a vintage radio or whatever it is, unplug it when you're doing anything. I've made a mistake in the past of uh, thinking I'll just redo that bit. Ah, <laughs> it's still plugged in. I've got a double pole double throw switch on here so when this is off none of this has got mains on it but of course the switch has the wires coming and the switch is live obviously so you've got to be a bit careful that's the transmitter there which is rather nice got that from a chap locally thanks Andy if you're watching I haven't got round to looking at it yet I've got the plug the Jones connector for the back and the rest of it but uh, I just haven't got round to looking at it yet so we've got 6.3 volt for heaters out of the back. That's the transmitter. This is 12 volt heaters. So I've got a 12 volt supply out of the back for those heaters. HT for this is 250. Women coming forward. There. There is a higher instance now of diagnosis amongst the younger women. And in fact, we That's LBC. Um, that is 600, which doesn't go into that, of course. That's a different pin on the optical socket on the back. Uh, so yeah, it's it's all right. I'm quite pleased with that. I haven't done the 600 supply yet. I haven't finished that bit yet. I found a nice choke, um, a Palmico choke, 10 Henry choke at 75 milliamps, which is perfect for the smoothing. Yeah, the 600 is for the transmitter, which um, seems to be wired for 250 volts. So the valve wants 600 on its anode, the PA valve, and it's got 250. 
So if it's run flat out, it's 12 and a half watts. Well, it's a 60 watt valve. Uh, I was going to run it at sort of 40 watts, which would be more than enough, and it would keep the valve just nice. So I'm going to have to put 600 on it. This choke, there were two side by side on an old chassis a friend of mine gave me. Martin, oh, you watch these videos, don't you, Martin? There it is. I put one in here. This is a, a spare one, which is rather nice. You know when we, uh, your valve radio, okay, you've got two smoothing capacitors normally, haven't you, in one can, one aluminium can, and between the two is a resistor. Oh, look, there's a resistor. Something like that, similar to that. That is that is a smoothing resistor. So you've got one capacitor, the reservoir one side, and the smoothing capacitor the other side of this. You're far better off to use a choke. This is a, an LF choke, low frequency choke. And what it does, it chokes off, it won't allow through any low frequency like hum. You know, HT hum. Uh, the resistor does a good job in most cases in vintage valve radios, but in any, any decent equipment like this, you're better off with a choke. I was running this with a resistor. There's a picture of inside the power supply. Yeah, you're better off with a choke than a resistor. It doesn't matter on these old vintage valve radios, domestic radios, but a decent bit of kit like the HRO, you want a decent power supply. Using wood is quite handy because you can screw tag strip to it. The bridge rectifier you can see there, the fuse. There's the octal socket on the back. Wood is very useful, just use little wood screws for everything. It's cheating really, because obviously a aluminium metal chassis, you've got to drill out the chassis. So that's it, there it is in situ up there. Um, I still haven't done the 600 volts. The idea is, what I want to do is the valve transmitter, which is down there on the floor, the valve transmitter in conjunction with the valve receiver on top band. We've got a local net here uh, on 1980 kilohertz top band and I've listened to the lads on this and it's fantastic. You know, a proper valve receiver, AM net, of course. So once I can get the transmitter working, I'll have, uh, you know, transmit and receive, power supply, and I've got to make an aerial changeover relay. Funnily enough, there isn't one in the transmitter. Normally, there's an aerial changeover relay, isn't there? But what I will probably do, I'm probably boring you now, what I'll probably do is use my, for receive, my mini whip active antenna the little mini whip because on top band it, on the big doublet i've got it's just so much noise on the end fed i've got noise everywhere on the mini whip the active antenna it's beautiful especially on the hf 150 receiver it's really nice beautiful audio so that's the idea valve transmitter valve receiver join in the top band am net that's it so there we are. This will be the final video about the HRO because uh, it's all finished. Thanks for watching. I'll let you know when I'm doing the transmitter. That'll be the next video. But I've got to do Martin's uh, KW Vespa transmitter. That's down on the floor there with the cardboard lid over the power supply. I suppose that'll be the next video. I don't know. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.